Hello, this is Mark from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. If you ever wanted to know the difference between MMS texting and SMS texting, this lesson will fill you in. In fact, I took an excerpt directly from the course that we have at Productive Computing University. The name of that course is called Connect FileMaker to Twilio. And in that course, we'll teach you all about Twilio and how to connect FileMaker to it in order to send texts from FileMaker. So here we go, let's jump into that lesson. In this lesson, we define the differences between SMS versus MMS. We also talk about what they are, why they're important, and the pros and cons between the two. So SMS stands for Short Message Service, whereas MMS stands for Multimedia Messaging Service. SMS is the original way to text, and we are still using that today. MMS is the modern way to text. It includes images, multimedia, it's more advanced, it has more character capability, and we're going to learn more details here in a second. I thought it'd be wise for us to take a moment and look at some texting history because it does give you context as a developer here in this modern era and kind of lets you know that you're leaning on the shoulders of tech giants from long ago on the technology that you're working with. So the MMS messaging timeline and the history progression here of how things happened, it was actually way back in 1984 when the first invention of SMS happened. All right. And then in 1992, Neil Papworth sends the first text message to Richard Jarvis at Vodafone. And since phones back then didn't have keyboards, he had to write the text on a computer in order to receive it on the phone. Early SMS phones could not send messages and only used SMS to receive network notifications like voicemail alerts. Think of this as a one-way page. In many ways, that's exactly what it was. It was a one-way text message, no way to respond to it directly. Then a little later, Nokia became the first company to make its entire range capable of sending text messages. So that's sort of when it became in vogue. And then in 99, Kyocera releases the first camera phone in Japan, but there's still no way to send pictures from the phone. So you can determine by that correlation there that, in a sense, the camera on the phone gave a natural rise to wanting to send pictures via the phone, since the camera was there already. The first 3G networks go online in 2000. While not available in many places, the technology can now transmit data much faster, making it easier to read and send larger files like photos. Then in 2002, Sony Ericsson introduces the first MMS-capable phones. That's when we're actually doing MMS via a phone, along with a high-frequency 2G network capable of actually sending the data. So the network had to be just as compatible as the ability for the technology to send the picture in the first place. Everything sort of works together. 2007, 3G networks are now used throughout the world, and the higher data rate improves the reliability of MMS messages. Then in 2007 again, Apple releases the first iPhone, the world's first smartphone, known as a smartphone. The rise of camera-equipped smartphones results in a much greater use of MMS messaging. Apple embraced this technology from day one. In 2010 to 2013, the annual American MMS messaging traffic increases from 57 billion to 96 billion messages and counting. So that's a brief overview of how this all came to be. I found this little tidbit interesting and worth taking a moment to talk about. When you think about getting a text message, back in the day, I remember the phones had screens only about this big, and you were lucky to get a full sentence, maybe a few words, but a full sentence was asking a lot, especially if it was a long sentence. And you get a text and, you know, you push OK to read it and maybe you push respond and then you'd have to type, you know, with the little letters and try to send a text back. Well, essentially that's text messaging. And the funny thing is we are using the exact same technology today, except we have taken it up a notch. And the good news is we'll learn how to do both in this particular course. We're actually going to cover both of those. And you won't really have to work that much harder to get some of that compelling media in there. But first, let's talk a little bit more about the differences, why you'd use one over the other, and some considerations before just jumping off into going crazy with your text messaging. So first, the original technology, SMS, short message service, has a 160 character limit, which isn't a lot. But today's day and age, we do send 
We're still using SMS as the technology, but we make longer texts. And when we send a longer text, it still can use the SMS technology. But what happens is, is it breaks that into bite-sized pieces, sends it to the recipient, and then the recipient's phone puts those bite-sized pieces back together to make a much longer message. Much longer, in fact, than 160 characters would have you believe is the limit. Next, let's talk about MMS, which is Multimedia Messaging Service. This has a whopping 1600 character limit, which is 10 times more than 160 characters. However, even though you can send a 1600 character message and Twilio supports up to 1600 characters, they recommend that you keep your messages to 320 characters or less for maximum reliability. MMS transmits messages over the internet using TCP IP. So it is, you know, based on the internet, solid foundation. It allows for multimedia attachments, including images, videos, audio files, browser previews, and more. So those are the main differences between the two. Now let's take a look at what it looks like on the phone. And surprisingly, you might not even realize there's a difference when you look at this at first blush. On the left side is an SMS message sent and received by a smartphone. It looks quite like a normal text message. To look at it, you would think that you're not running on 1980s technology. On the right side, you have an MMS message, which is essentially the same message, but this time I have a picture, I have a link, and I have a emoji on that last response there. So that is a far more engaging and kind of what the world expects when it comes to texting, at least person-to-person -person personalized texting. But businesses now are getting definitely into MMS text messaging so that they can provide more compelling content. That brings me to my next topic here, which is when would you use one over the other and maybe some simple use cases to understand. So as you read through the article here, it says that SMS is particularly good for short calls to action, customer support, collecting feedback, sending reminders, confirming orders, tracking deliveries, two-factor authentication, resetting passwords, time-sensitive messages, and text to join campaigns. All of that works pretty well over SMS. MMS is great if you want to send messages that have more information and more details, sharing instructional videos and audio clips embedded right in the message, grabbing the audience's attention and making those open rates a little higher, make it more compelling, highlighting products or services with multimedia, offering coupons, running competitions, inviting customers to events, sharing holiday greetings with images, including a QR code in the message, times you want to customize the appearance of the message itself. Of course, there are exceptions. You should pay attention to the customer base and figure out which type of message they ultimately prefer and which works best. Now, keep in mind, the bigger the message, the longer the message, the more you include with that message, the more you're going to pay to send that message. And if you look at the lesson called Characters Count here in this course, I go through some of the details of how pricing is affected by character count or more importantly, segments where this is how Twilio charges you for texts sending out. The moment you send any kind of media, the game changes and you're going to pay more. But that's all to be expected. The more you get, the more you have to pay. All right, so that essentially is the difference between SMS and MMS, why you might use one over the other. Again, that's short message service on the SMS side, and then MMS stands for multimedia messaging service. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Thanks for joining us. If you want to find out more, go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com and then locate the course called Connect FileMaker to Twilio. Thanks for watching.